science. We get experimental yeah, science. We're curious, non judgmental. It's very true. They didn't look at tastiness. They are quite small, so I think the amount that you'd have to eat is quite large to be able to get a flavor profile. And these tend to be difficult to find, number one, because of where they're living. So these are subterranean dwelling millipedes that are just fundamentally like hard to find. Like they, it's where they were discovered. You might be like, Blint, are you serious? Like why are they discovered there and it's brand new? It's just no one's really looking. Yes, there's also a lot of toxicity associated with these animals. They did not do a toxicity profile on the new species, but I would still say wait and consult the scientists before having the, uh, the food item. So leg number for a millipede. There's two legs per segment and actually 354 total legs. Centipede, one leg per segment and up to 750 total legs. So centipedes are carnivorous. Dentrivore or like decaying matter is what millipedes eat. Millipedes tend not to be toxic or not, sorry, tend not to bite humans while uh, centipedes do. Lifespan differences ranging for millipedes of anywhere from one to 10 years. And then lifespan for centipedes five to six years for current individuals. General of entomologies, if it has spiky bits, bitey bits, ax, anger is brightly cut, or it's a good idea to never put near your mouth. There are exceptions to every rule, particular one ant that is considered a delicacy and it's put near many a mouth, even Gordon Ramsay's mouth. But let's go ahead and touch on just some of the, the story components on this. So just a little bit of background information for y'all about this millipede. Uh, this was discovered in Los Angeles, of all things. It's really small, it's, uh, 10 centimeters roughly under the soil. You start, you start able to identify it. And it is the third known species in this genus. The second one was actually discovered a year ago. The 1,306-legged millipede. Uh, that was also discovered underground, but not in LA, but a very similar in terms of genetic similarity to this one that was identified. The species name is Lacme Sokol, and I'm probably butchering the name of it, but that is a new species of this animal. And you might be like, why was it just published now? To identify a new species and prove that it's very different can take a fair bit of work. And it was actually identified at first on accident. So I, I, I looked into the story of how it was identified and not looking at the actual paper, but what turns out was one of the researchers has an alert on their phone on iNaturalist, which is the app that you can download and take a picture of an animal and, it, and pretty reliably identifies what the animal is. And so this guy had this alert on his phone and that's what alerted him. Under the impression that cave ecosystems are fairly limited, but I guess it depends on accessible sources of nutrients and water. Yes, there they seem to live in damp soil and it's not even like these aren't even in cave ecosystems. Instead, they're just crawling around, again, roughly 10 centimeters on underground and so this this aficionado of iNaturalist again you take an image it uploads to the app it usually can identify what species it is the app came up with we don't know what this is and so the researcher has an alert up on his phone was like I want to go check this out so when he went over he went over to the original location where the image was taken and it was uh he like flew over to California for this and he went to go look for millipedes and he found similar millipedes so the second genus was in the was in this forest away from la about 100 kilometers away and then they decided like let's go travel to la as well and see what it what, what if we can see something in there and so in los angeles they were like oh this they're just randomly digging and they found this other worm and they were noticing that they looked a little bit different and so what they ended up doing was and i think this is quite clever they tried to artificially inseminate the two species of millipedes that they had identified with each other and the idea was if the one in the forest could artificially inseminate the one in la then they might be two different species if they can't artificially inseminate if they cannot then they are two separate species so they were artificially inseminating millipedes by taking apparently sperm are on their some of their leg segments and so there might be communication via feet but it, it's not apparent in that there hasn't been really enough research on that front to say what their behavior is like so again one of why this is a cool species you have to dig in order to get it you have to go you know at least 10 centimeters underground if not more they live a totally subterranean life that is why they are this color if they were you know above ground they'd have some kind of melanin and dark coloration or something to either absorb sunlight or reflect it away 
away. They said their closest living relative is uh, of this Lakma, uh, genus-wise, is in South America. A South America and Africa. Uh, South Africa was the other, were the two places. In two different continents, there were close relatives of this animal. Old bloodline on those species, probably. It's not clear, Abra. They didn't go into looking at what the phylogenetics are in terms of evolutionary time. When these animals are so rare, it's usually gene loss that's happened, and they're not the ancestral state. So the if, if it were the ancestral state, you'd see more of them, and you know, it might be that there are more of them. It's just we haven't looked for them yet. So at this stage, the running prevailing hypothesis is that they lost a bunch of features, allowing them to now be living underground because they've lost a lot of light detection, melanin pigment production, and so on and so forth versus acquisition of traits like all the other millipedes that are above ground. So those are the two, you know, hypotheses. Again, if you find a ton more that are underground that have these features, you might can reverse that hypothesis. But right now they're in the, the far less and so most likely making it so they're just happening via gene loss. Thinking because of split related species across the continents, it depends on how they're clustering it. The clustering of these Abra, it didn't seem like it was on some gene families versus the entire genome. And because it wasn't the entire genome it's a little bit harder to say what the relatedness is it's just they look at particular regions of the genomes and seeing how like what selection pressures they're undergoing right like what's gonna be like are these regions similar to one another or are they different from one another and that particular regions that are undergoing mutation in these species are very similar across continents and i think the reason that they have that they did that approach is because there simply isn't enough data in terms of sequencing depth wise on all the potential close relatives and so this is like it's a secondary way of testing and the phylogenetic trees you get are usable but they're not going to be necessarily the most reliable data output if that makes sense yeah and so this again uh is the main body of the paper let's take a look at some of the images because i know that's what actually we want to see so they're really really it's a really pretty paper in terms of imaging even the images of the actual millipede is really nice high res you know some of them are out of focus so they didn't really do image stacking but the ones the ones that are in focus look really pretty and so they're tangled together here there's a male and a female here and then you have the high resolution images of what these actually look like and the, this is where i'm just always like blown away by how good the scanning electron microscope is to see this hidden world and so again this is like the top of the millipede you can see a tantenny the pincers as well and then all of the the sensory bristles all over its body merging live on stream i think that's what we'll need to do Glenn. if your question was the exoskeleton here yeah these are exoskeletons and what's nice about this is that you can dry out the sample this is with any insect with an exoskeleton you don't have to do anything special in terms of preparation of these samples are they thinner because they're less space underground no reason for it as of yet it could be that's a good hypothesis of how they move because they don't necessarily have caverns underground that they live in like that they build but rather they're just going through the lo loose dirt and that is a good hypothesis to why they might be that thin to me it would be hard to know if that is the reason unless you could test it and so you would need to know the genetic basis for their size and you could in theory do that and then change around the, the thickness of the animal by manipulating their genes and seeing okay if I change their size do they still have the ability to crawl around in these areas if that's our hypothesis and then you can test it uh, a lot of scanning electron micrograph images like this are taken not so much by they're not taken by entomology but they're rather just taken by random biologists and so what you do is that there's a flat surface and you have double-sided carbon tape on there you need carbon tape because it's not reactive because in the microscope you're shooting an electron beam at the sample and that is then shooting back into the sensor I don't know about the lifespan of this the diet is of this animal and interestingly enough there's a lot of questions here that in this paper they don't analyze this paper is just looking at fundamental imaging of like here is the male reproductive system of this animal this is a scanning electron micrograph of a antenna um, but so this is overcoated the sample you can also tell based on these hairs there's these extra bulges on the hair systems as well our defensive system made a sense motion usually on the antenna the bristles what their goal is there are neurons in those bristles these are sensory olfactory bristles uh these are neurons that usually have an olfactory receptor gene called orco1 that's universal in insects and then a second orco 
that they bind together to give it specificity to smell something. And so these are detecting sensors versus defense for these. It's just like, that's how they smell. How does it, an animal get so many legs? Was a large genetic change necessary? My guess, and this is not validated in any way, to really get this, you'd have to do mutations in the genome. It's not duplication of the legs, it's segments. Body segments are duplicated, and through developmental programming, you just add on additional segments, and I believe that's most likely what happened, either through changes in gene expression. Most likely, it's a, um, a gradient. What we've seen in the past with insects is there's a global gradient, so there's a really high concentration of something on one end and a really low on the other end. And what that tells the animal is this is head, this is tail. And then there could be internal gradients within the animal and that could give it body segments. Motor cortex in millipedes. There is no motor co cortex in, uh, in arthropods. There is their movement, like neuronal structure is called the ellipsoid body. And that's responsible for locomotor movement. How is it the control works on these animals? And there's hypotheses, but I don't, I haven't seen anything that convinces me because I need it to be able to break the system and fix the system genetically to prove to me that that is actually what's, what's happening. Reproductive organs. There's four of them. The poison glands are suspected. These are these circular openings here. They have they did not prove to me beyond a reasonable doubt that they are in fact poison glands because they didn't extract any poison from them. They didn't look at the glands. They didn't see what the composition of those glands are. And so it's just a hypothesis based on similar appearance and shape. So it may or may not be, you know, something. In highest fulfillment of feet. And those are the relatives of, yes, the species that was discovered this past week, the new species we're chatting about. And actually the newest one was discovered has... Uh, uh, 760 legs so that's taking now and I guess that puts it at third third place and you can see that some of the differences we talked about earlier one is more rounded with the millipede and the centipede is more flat so large variety of millipedes that we know of today and the addition of that new species you know there's a lot of features that that new species have that existing millipedes also have and it's just cool to see how they fit into the millipede kingdom and just the large level of diversity that exists so that is science news story number one one of the night.